Took the supermarket flowers from the windowsill Threw the day old tea from the cup Packed up the photo album Matthew had made Memories of a life that's been loved Took the Garrett Wilson cars and stuffed animals Put the old ginger beer down the sink Dad always told me don't you cry when you're down But mum there's a tear every time that I blink Oh I'm in pieces, it's tearing me up But I know a heart that's broke is a heart that's been loved So I'll sing hallelujah You were an angel in 
the shape of my mom When I fell down you'd be there holding me up Spread your wings as you go And when God takes you back He'll say hallelujah, you're home Fluffed the pillows, made the bed, stacked the chairs up Folded your nightgowns neatly in a case Can they stand? Jesus said, I am the resurrection and I am the life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His compassion never fails. Every morning they are renewed. Jesus said, Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. I am sure neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor power, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. We brought nothing into the world, and we take nothing out. The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The eternal God is our refuge and underneath are the everlasting arms. We are gathered together in this chapel for a service of thanksgiving for the life of Frederick Hillary Annie. Let us now receive his body for burial. With faith in Jesus Christ, we receive the body of our brother, Frederick Hillary Aline for burial. Our brother was washed in holy baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Let us therefore with confidence pray to God our heavenly father, the giver of life, that he would raise him to perfection in the company of the saints. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God of grace and glory, we remember before you this day our brother Hillary, Frederick Hillary. We thank you for giving him to us, his family and friends, to know and love as a companion on our earthly pilgrimage. In your boundless compassion, Console us who mourn, give us faith to see in death the gates of eternal life, so that in quiet confidence we may continue our course on earth until by your call we are reunited with those who have gone before 
through Jesus Christ, O oh Lord. Amen. Kindly be seated, and we will now receive the appreciation by Tyrone Allen, followed by a tribute by Jeffrey Rowe. I would like to start with a, with a quotation that fits my dad's personality. The greatest mistake you can ever make in life is to be continually fearing that you'll make one. By Ellen Hubbard. Frederick H Hillary Elaine, dad, left his mark on the hearts of the people that he left behind. Our world is a better place because he was here and he will be dearly missed as he has now left the world. He loved his job at, the, at BT British Telecom in the UK, central London. My mum my would make sure that he had a freshly pressed starched shirt every day to go to work. Cricket was always a passion for my dad. He, wouldn't, he couldn't get enough of it. With both the radio and the TV playing the same game together. One of my childhood memories was when my family went to visit other relatives. After a long day out, on the drive home, when I could tell that we were approaching home, I knew that if I pretended to fall asleep, my dad would carry me in the house, up the stairs, as I didn't want to walk, and I also liked to be carried. Relationships are what meant the most to my dad. His relationships with people, his extended family, friends and workmates. His friends and family also enjoyed having him around. He was a humorous storyteller. Story My dad is a great example of the wisdom of this quotation. The greatest mistake you can ever make in life is to continue fearing that you'd make one. Thank you. Thank you. Just the uh, yeah, my name is Jeff, obviously everyone knows me, and um, first of all, good afternoon everyone, good to see you, I haven't seen many people for many years, but I'm glad to be here and um, celebrate the life of, celebrate the life of my father, dad, even though he's my uncle, he's my father, I lived with him longer than my natural father, and I give God thanks that I could see and spend so much great times with him, sitting down watching cricket, sitting down watching the snooker, and I even bought him a Sky Dish and TV one year when he wanted to watch England versus the West Indies. I paid £329 just for him to watch the cricket that summer, and he was so shocked. It was my little part-time job as a student, and I bought it for him, and he was, he was just so overwhelmed. He just couldn't believe what I'd done for him. I said, yes, no, no, there's no, you fed and watered me when my mum passed, you took me in, you know, when we didn't have much. And he looked after me and my sister very well and Auntie Panchita. And I give God thanks for that. And, um, and then to take us to Barbados to meet all our family in Barbados when I was only 16, it was amazing. And it's because of that I've, I've you know, I've still got great friendships here from growing up. And, um, yeah, I just want to say, Daddy, I'm really going to miss you. And you sitting down there watching the cricket and your big toe curling up when, they, when the West Indies got the English players out. And me and my sister Paul used to fall around laughing when you used to see the big toe curling up. 
because I knew that we knew he was really excited when his big toe curled back. Um, it was a family joke, and um, and I just want to share with you as well. He was telling a joke once, and uh, we never heard this saying. And he called these group of people. He said, um, "Yeah, they when you look at the people, they just come like harbour shark." All right, and when I first heard that, I fell about laughing as a child. And he's looking at me thinking, why are you laughing? But I said, Uncle, you look at how you're talking about the people saying they're like Harbour Shark. All right? And to me, that was just funny. All right? And um, got told off, but we laughed anyway. But um, yeah, it was so funny. And we shared great moments together. And, and um, I'll, I'll never forget those. Um, and when he used to um, help cook the cuckoo and the flying fish, um, I still love eating that. And I used to eat everyone else's cuckoo when they didn't want to eat it. Um, so, yeah, it's great. Thank you. We stand now and join our voices together as we sing the hymn, Praise to the Lord the Almighty. The hymn, A for A. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in your Son, Jesus Christ, you have given us a true faith and a sure hope. Strengthen this faith and hope in us all our days, 
that we may live as those who believe and trust in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection to eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Kindly be seated as we now receive the first scripture reading from 2 Corinthians chapter 4. So, 2 Corinthians, um, verse 16 to 18. Sorry? Chapter 4, verse 16 to 18. For which cause we faint not, but though our outer man perish, yet the inner man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding an eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things that are for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Verse nine, five to nine. Verse nine. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 9. Wherefore we labour. Wherefore we labour, that may we accept, be accepted of him. Wherefore we labour, that whether present, present or, or absent, absent, we may, we may be, be accepted, accepted of him. him. For we must all appear before the judgment. Just seat of Christ that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done whether it be good or bad knowing therefore knowing therefore that the terror of the Lord was persuaded men but we are made to manifest unto God, and I trust also we are made manifest in, in our consciousness. For we are commanded not ourselves again unto you, but give your occasion, your occasion to glory on our, behalf, on our behalf, that ye may have somewhat to answer them, which glory in appearance and not in heart. Isn't that up to 16? We remain seated as we sing at Psalms 23, the Prince.
So John, verse, John 14, verses 1 to 6. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, that ye may be also. And wherever I go, ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we not know whither thou goest. Yeah, how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me. We sing together the hymn, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine. We stand, blessed assurance, Jesus is Mine. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song. This is my story, this is my song. As in my Savior all the day long. Perfect salvation. Let us pray. O oh God, who gave us birth, you are ever more ready to hear than we are to pray. You know our needs before we ask and our ignorance in asking. Give to us now your grace, that as we shrink before the mystery of death, we may see the light of eternity. 
Speak to us once more your solemn message of life and death. Help us to live as those who are prepared to die. And when our days are accomplished, and enable us to die as those who go forth to live, so that living or dying, our life may be in you, and that nothing in life or in death will be able to separate us from your great love. Amen. Kindly be seated. The passage that was read to us from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, a few verses up, in verse 7, says, But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. And then, a little further down, it reminds us that we live in tents. Our bodies are like tents, and we waste away. My brothers and sisters, we are here this evening to give God thanks for the life of one who once lived and laughed and worked among us, Frederick Hillary Allen. And for a few moments, reflect with me on our reading. We live in an age that like to make things that last. We have our plastic and non-breakable jars and cups. We buy a battery and we are given the assurance that it will last as long as we own our car. And you and I would like to guarantee that we would last forever and if that was possible, wouldn't it be great? Maybe we would just love to live like the centenarians. And when someone reaches that age, there's a sense that they have lived already and that they will not die. Yet here in this passage, Paul gives us a picture that is somewhat bleak, an image of the human life. He says we are like clay pots or earthen vessels, pottery that can crack, get chipped, and broken if dropped. And Paul in this passage is telling us that life takes its toll on our physical strength and stamina, and we wear out. For the body is made of material that will not last forever. And so as we sit in the service of thanksgiving, as painful as it is, this is born true. It is, we are like vessels, however, that are used. Vessels created for meaning. Vessels created to be useful in this life. And we know the use of vessels, don't we? They are filled and they're emptied. For some, they are used for good meaning. For others, they're not. Perhaps or the vessel is used for medicine, for the sick, or water for the thirsty, or even to put soup in for the hungry. As the vessel of life, this human body is used to benefit others, but itself, it is wasting away. Like the candle that gives forth light, it grows shorter with each passing hour, 
until all its resources are expended. From what I have heard and the conversation that I had with his daughters, our brother was one who expended himself. He loved his job and he did it to the best of his ability in service to others. By today's standard, people may not say that he was a great leader or he was not a president. He did not make a name that hit the headlines because of some great achievement. He was just an ordinary husband and father, grandfather, uncle, friend, relative, just an ordinary employee at the telecommunications um, office who did his work and climbed the ladder to where he was able to be satisfied with what he was doing, using uh, the gifts and skills given to him by the Creator not only to do his job, but to provide for his family, along with his wife, the loving and caring them. Whatever he was, my brothers and sisters, to you, each of you have those special memories of his life as a testimony to how he expanded himself for others. But Paul says, outwardly, we are wasting away. It is appointed to all people to die, and inevitably, physical deterioration cannot be avoided. We can use as much vitamins. We can flex and run and eat all the best foods. But this earthly tent of ours eventually will waste away. In conversation, the family saw that he was getting down in age. I believe that even though it was sudden, that little gnawing thing inside was saying to you that maybe it might be sooner than you think. But I want to tell you this evening, family, this is not the end of the story. For indeed, we have reason to mourn. But this is not the end, and therefore we need not despair. For we are told that there is a great treasure hidden within this clay pot or earthen vessel, within the heart of those who have faith in Jesus Christ. There is a spiritual treasure. And Paul encouraged us to fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what we see now is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. When the temporary thing passes away and our earthly body is a temporary thing, the eternal treasure of the heart remains. I believe that those of us who have accepted the gift of salvation activates this wonderful treasure of faith in Jesus Christ. We are invited, as in the gospel that was read, to trust in God. Let not our hearts be troubled, but to allow him to be the peace which only he can give. And that is why, Christian friends, that services such as this one gives us a wonderful opportunity to reflect on our own life, to see where our priorities are. And even though we are in grief, it still asks us to stop and to realize that life is so fragile and that everything we do, we are just a heartbeat away from eternity. 
Therefore, it is important what treasures we are concentrating on. I know it is hard for you this evening as you say goodbye to your dad. But as you hear words of scripture, you are reminded that one day, one day, we too will cross this bridge. And the importance is how do we live our life now? What would others say about us? Would grandchildren or friends be able to talk about the cricket? Cricket in itself is grief, but to just think about the fellowship that they would have had with us. Would our children be able to say, this is the example that was set by my loved one. Earthen vessels we are, but inside there is a spiritual treasure, a treasure which reminds us that we need to have that relationship with the Good Shepherd. In 1947, someone came across some old jars. These old earthen vessels contained the Dead Sea Scrolls, which are a very valuable source of study for the Christian church. The jars themselves were not so valuable, but the treasure of God's word inside was priceless. In a like way, you and I are like earthen vessels. Frederick was an earthen vessel. And the treasure that we speak about is that eternal glory of God and the unseen things of the spiritual world that resides in us. Even though our outer vessel will waste away, there is that, earth, that special treasure inside which cannot be touched by earthen things, our relationship with Jesus Christ. Paul says that death and life are both at work in the Christian's heart or in a person's heart. Death is within each of us because we have sinned. It works its end of the destruction and takes each of us down to the grave. But those who choose to have a relationship with the Good Shepherd, then because of our acceptance, our faith in Christ is activated and death does not have the whole over us. In fact, we have victory over the grave because of Jesus' resurrection. This evening, family, you have a choice. You have a choice to choose what you will hold on to you to. Will it be the memory of an aging dad whose body became frail and weak at the end? Or will it be the man that held the treasure of faith within his heart and lived a life that influenced each one of you? A faith that was able to laugh in the good times and the bad times. What about your life this evening? Where's your focus? On the physical or on the spiritual? God wants you and he wants me to focus our lives on him and allow God to mold us and make us into the men and women that he would want us to be. He is here. He will comfort you in this your time of grief. But he also asks you, what are you going to do with your earthen vessel in the days ahead? The verse says we are hard pressed on every side, but we are not crushed. Perplexed, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. This evening, it may feel that way. But 
we need to graft onto Jesus so that we too might deal with the adversaries of life, even death. And as a result, fill our earthen vessel with that peace and that faith that only Jesus Christ can give. I leave with you this poem. Dying, Christ destroy our death. Rising, Christ restored our life. Christ will come again in glory, here and now, dear friends. We are God's children. What we shall be has not been revealed, but we know when he appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. This is the hope we hold on to. For Jesus said, I am resurrection, and I am life. This evening, family, you are an earthen vessel, one in which Jesus longs to live. Grieve, yes, you must, but accept this wonderful gift from your dad, the opportunity to stop and reflect and decide what you're going to do with your life from today on. May the God of peace surround you. May his everlasting arms continue to uphold you. And may his Holy Spirit continue to soothe you. Amen. Let us stand now as we affirm our faith in the saying of the Apostles' Creed as printed in your order of service on page five. I believe in God, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son or Lord. Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us commend our brother. Grant us, Lord, the wisdom and grace to use or right the time that is left to us here on earth. Lead us to repent of our sins, the evil we have done and the good we have failed to do and strengthen us to follow the steps of your Son in the way that leads to the fullness of eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us commend our brother, Frederick Hillary, to the mercy of God, our Maker and Redeemer. Heavenly Father, by your mighty power, you have given us new life in Christ Jesus. We entrust Frederick to your merciful keeping. In the faith of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who died and rose again to save us and is now alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit in glory forever. Amen. Rest eternal grant to him, O Lord. May he and all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. The God of peace who brought again from the dead, O Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the eternal covenant, may you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. The hymn, the closing hymn in the chapel, and can it be.
see the Savior's blood. Die ye for me, who call his faith for me, who gain to death pursuit. Amazing love, how can it be that thou
Everyone the Father gives to me will come to me. I will never turn away anyone who believes in me. He who raised Jesus Christ from the dead will also give new life to our mortal bodies through his indwelling spirit. My heart therefore is glad and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. I heard a voice from heaven saying, write this, happy are the dead who die in the faith of Christ. Henceforth says the spirit, they may rest from their labors for they take with them the records of their deeds. Man born of a woman has but a short time to live. Like a flower he blossoms and then withers. Like a shadow he flees and never stays. In the midst of life, we are in death. To whom can we turn for help? But to you, Lord, who are justly angered by our sins. Lord God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, holy and most merciful Savior, deliver us from the bitter pains of eternal death. You know the secrets of our hearts. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Forgive us our sins. And at our last hour, let us not fall away from you. Ensure uncertain hope of resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ. We commend to Almighty God, our brother Frederick Hillary, and we commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. And we beseech you in your infinite goodness to give us grace to live in your day love and to die in your favor, that when your well-beloved son shall come again in judgment, both this our brother Frederick and we ourselves may be found acceptable in your sight. Grant this for the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, O Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, with whom still live the spirit of those who die in the Lord, and with whom the souls of the faithful are in joy and felicity, we give you heartfelt thanks for the good example of all your servants, who, having finished their course in faith, now find rest and refreshment. May we, with all who have died in the, the true faith of your holy name, have perfect fulfillment and bliss in your eternal and everlasting glory. Through Jesus Christ, O Lord. Amen. Grant, O Lord, to all who are bereaved the spirit of faith and courage that they may have strength to meet the days to come with steadfastness and patience, not sorrowing as those without hope, but in thankful remembrance of your great goodness and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love. And this we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Rest eternal grant to him, O Lord. And may he and all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. The Lord bless him and keep him. The Lord make his face to shine upon him and be gracious to him. The Lord lift up his countenance upon him and give him peace. And unto him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory. And uh, with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, now and forever. Amen.
But for a sim at the graveside, rock of ages cleft for me. Rock of ages. My soul, the king of heaven.
eyes have seen the glory. God be the glory.
merciful Father, and Lord of all life, we praise you that men are made in your image and reflect your truth and light. We thank you for the life of your son, Frederick, for the love and mercy he received from you and showed among us. Above all, we rejoice at your gracious promise to all your servants, living and departed, that we shall again at the coming of Christ. And we ask that in due time, we may share with our brother that clear vision when we shall see your face in the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit rest and remain with you always. Amen. For your mercy never fails me All my days I've been held in your hand From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head Oh, I will sing Of the goodness of God All my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God You are close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend And I have lived in the goodness of God Hey, was all 